the migration is symbolic of nomadic life, one of the world's last remaining traditional cultures. Along familiar trails, the group of nomads and reindeer headed straight into the cold, desolate lands of Russia's far north. They conquered this harsh land to survive and raise millions of reindeer every year. Russia accounts for two-thirds of the world's reindeer population. Reindeer are one of the few animals that can adapt perfectly to life in the Arctic Circle. It is not surprising that nomads decided to conquer the vast Arctic region and tried to tame the powerful inhabitants of this tundra. The herds of reindeer herded in the tundra are very large, up to 1,000 to 3,000 individuals or even more. Unlike Norway, Sweden and Finland, in Russia there are many different peoples involved in reindeer herding. They have a cultural and economic tradition that depends largely on reindeer. The largest herds of reindeer are kept on the Yermol and Tamir peninsulas in the Nenets Autonomous Region. This is where the Nenats, Enats, Dolgans and Ganassans live. While the total world reindeer population is estimated at 4.7 million, in Yamal alone, local reindeer herders own more than 1.7 million reindeer. Before Santa Claus first appeared with his reindeer and sleigh, the reindeer played a role as dinner, and indigenous herders kill up to 120,000 animals a year to satisfy luxury tastes in countries around the world. The only signs of nomads are livestock trails. The brown dirt lines were stamped flat by generations of feet to form a giant unchanging loop. Trails were important because they were a safe way to get them where they needed to go. A rushing stream to get water, a bush to tether animals, a place where they could pitch a tent to cook food eat. Indigenous herders in Siberia have worked tirelessly to maintain their centuries-old tradition of reindeer herding. Because for them, herding livestock is not just a job, it's a way of life. Nomads are taught animal husbandry by their parents and they pass on their skills to their children. For them, it is a special inheritance. The men are responsible for gathering the reindeer around camp each morning and keeping the herd moving in one direction throughout the day. Meanwhile, all work at the tent will be handled by the women. She was taking the food stored in the cellar, then taking the snow to boil water and cook. Like most nomadic women, she had a permanent curve in her back from hunching over the fireplace for most of her life. Reindeer graze until they are full, lie down for an hour and a half, then get up and eat again. After the herd clears the area of grass, the nomads will walk along the trails to the next new land. When arriving at a new location, nomads quickly set up tents for shelter. The tents are built with basic materials such as wood and reindeer skin, but are very sturdy to withstand high winds and snowstorms. They will stay here for a few months, then go looking for a new land. This process is also quite difficult. The whole family will dismantle the tents together, arrange everything neatly, and load the furniture into the car to move. The men are trying to separate a reindeer from the herd. They put a rope around its neck and tightened it until it fell. With quick and skillful movements, the nomads removed its internal organs, and they ate slices of liver and drank the blood that was stagnant in the reindeer's abdominal cavity. You may feel quite scared by this image, but these deaths are a necessity. It helps nomads survive in harsh environments. The other men were shedding the reindeer. They chopped its body into pieces, head, legs, ribs, and preserved it in a snow pit. In this way, they can store large amounts of reindeer meat for a long time and this reindeer will feed a family for about a month. Not only providing meat, everything reindeer brings is useful to them. As for the reindeer fur, after it softens, they can use it to line the bottom of carts, cover tents, or make clothes and shoes. The dry tendons become suture threads. 
the horns have become a cure for all diseases, and reindeer sleds have become an indispensable means of transportation throughout the Arctic. Kiryak is one of the most experienced reindeer herders on the Kamchatka Peninsula, a region in the Russian Far East famous for its wild natural beauty. But after decades, the constant fluctuations of livestock life left people exhausted. Some of the land they live on is so high that there is permafrost. Therefore, even though there is a fire in the middle of the tent, the night is still very cold. You can see the snow covered the forest and the tents. To make it easier to move in and out of the tent, every morning, nomads will find a way to remove the layer of snow on the tent surface like this. Besides, to save money, during the day, some nomads do not heat their tents. Only when night falls do they use the wood-burning stove to cook their only hot meal of the day and warm the air inside. Wood needed for heating was often carried along for much of the journey, as forests along the way became scarce. However, for the nomadic nenets, summer is the worst season. In the humid environment, even though smoke curled from the top of the barn and a fire warmed the inside, the nomads were still attacked by mosquitoes. They can survive winters of minus 40 degrees, but cannot endure summer epidemics. Basically, summer activities are similar to winter activities. They still maintain slaughtering and sowing to ensure a living. However, the summer fields are full of dirt and mosquitoes, so every time they collect water, they need to filter it thoroughly before using it. So nomads would spend their summers migrating to the far north. When winter came, they drifted south, setting up tents on thick layers of snow. The nomadic culture of the Nenets is a unique combination of modernity and tradition. Nenets ride snowmobiles, start generators, talk on cell phones and meet people on the internet. The annual reindeer migration sees thousands of reindeer and nenets travel up to 1200 km along the Yamal Peninsula to the Kara Sea in Siberia. This is also one of the longest migrations among the world's nomads. And during the trip, the indispensable assistance of nomadic reindeer herders are dogs. This is the reindeer herd of the Venks. They are domesticated and not afraid of people. Traditionally, their reindeer are not slaughtered except in special circumstances. Besides, they also do not tend to make large herds, because such a herd would take too much time to graze and take care of. A culture weighs heavily on the shoulders of reindeer herders. In families, children from an early age learn how to sew clothes from reindeer skins, make sleds and mobile shelters, and how to herd and care for reindeer. They hope their children will continue to migrate. But every dream has its drawbacks. Climate change makes their lives increasingly difficult. So young people don't want to work and take care of animals. As a result, the next generation of nomadic reindeer herders is gradually decreasing. Hello my friends. Today, we are going to the horse farms in the United States to see how the process of raising millions of horses here happens. The first horses are said to have appeared in America in around 1493, and they were brought there by Christopher Columbus from Spain. Until the 1920s, horse numbers in the United States have considered to have peaked at about 25.3 million. According to the latest USDA statistics, as of June 2022, the current number of horses in the country is about 9.2 million, and their number of licensed horse farms is about 459,000 of various sizes. In addition to the millions of horses managed by ranchers, in the United States, there are about 87,000 wild horses 
living in the wild, and they are concentrated mainly in states like Nevada, Arizona, California, and Colorado. It is estimated 23,000 ponies are born in the United States each year, based on reports from horse ranchers. On average, each newborn foal weighs about 110 pounds, and they can stand up almost immediately after birth. Currently, Texas is the state with the largest number of horses in the country, with 939,000 horses. The next place on the list is California with 650,000, followed by Florida with 505,000. After birth, the foals will live on the farm for about three days with their mothers before they are released into the pastures to run around freely. A foal needs to suckle 25 to 35 pounds of milk each day, equivalent to 30% of their body weight. This is a herd of horses in Nevada. Every morning, they will be released to the pastures by the ranch owner to feed freely and all ponies over three days old will also be accompanied by their mothers. Currently in Nevada, there are about 78,000 horses raised on more than 3,000 farms of different sizes. In addition to thousands of horses managed by ranchers, Nevada is also famous for the largest number of wild horses in the country with about 42,000 horses, accounting for about 50% of the wild horse population in the country. This is a wild mare from Nevada. Look how she protects her young. A mare will not let any mature horses near her foal for the first two days. For the safety of the foal, the mare will attack anyone who poses a danger to the foal, even if those are healthy stallions. In the wild, there have been many cases of ponies being trampled to death by another herd of horses when its mother is not healthy enough to protect it. Currently, the most popular wild horse breed in the United States is the Mustang which makes up about 63% of the nation's wild horse population. This is a horse ranch in Denton County, Texas. In the late afternoon, cowboys will herd horses into a fenced area to rest and avoid the attack of some predators at night. Currently, Denton County is also the largest concentration of horses in Texas, with 372 farms and more than 300,000 horses. Currently, most horse breeds raised in the United States weigh about 800 pounds for females and 1,100 pounds for males. The breeding season for horses usually runs from February to the end of May, and this happens with both wild horses and farm-raised herds. During the breeding season, the stallions in the herd will fight each other very fiercely for the right to mate with the mares. With their kicks, strong stallions can seriously injure an opponent. Even the losing stallions may have to leave the herd and join another. This is the prize for the healthiest stallion in the herd. 
it will get to mate with all the mares in the herd. In the wild, wild horses usually live in herds of 5 to 19 individuals and the number of stallions in the herd is usually one to four. This is a herd of horses living in the city of Norco, California. Each day, dozens of horses here are also released by herders into the pasture to feed. Every day, an adult horse needs to be fed an equivalent of 2% of their body weight. Of that 90% of the feed the horse uses is grass, and the rest is a mixture of corn and soybeans that is fed when they return to the farm. Currently, in California, approximately 2.5 million acres of land is used for grazing horses, in which there are about 8,300 wild horses accounting for 1.2% of the state's horse population. Each day, these horses will move to the area of rivers and small lakes to drink water twice in the late morning and late afternoon. On average, a mature horse will drink about seven to 10 gallons of water per day. This is the process of moving a large herd of horses in northwestern Colorado. The end of April every year is when the cowboys here will move about 2,000 horses to other pastures to feed. Currently, in Colorado, there are about 256,000 horses, and the number of wild horses in this state is about 1850. Horses are considered fully mature when they reach five years of age, and the average lifespan of this animal is about 23 years. Currently, the majority of mature horses will be sold to jockeys. In addition, they will also be trained by cowboys to follow herds of cattle. A small number of horses in the United States are still sold to illegal slaughterhouses. Although the slaughter of horses for food has been banned across the country. <laughs>